Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. It only takes two seconds to make two clicks. So let's do it. Let's get back to the video. Hello, 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 Fearless Freedom Tribe. We are back for another exciting episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Today, we have Sandy Scarlotta, and she is going to tell you about all of the amazing things that she is up to. Hi, Dr. G. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. (laughs) We're glad you're here. So you got to tell us about who you are and what you're up to. Okay, so I'm Sandy Scarlatta. I've been a certified life coach since 2004. I'm also a business strategy coach. And earlier this year, I published my second book, which is called Happiness Solved, Climbing 100 Steps. It's right back there. There's another cut. And um, it's all about learning how to get back to a place of peace and happiness, because that has been my journey for the last 30 years. And when I was 12 years old, I was so happy and we lived outside of Annapolis, Maryland, and we had a hundred steps that went from the river dock to our house. And I was called home early and I was climbing the hundred steps and I was all happy. And I was greeted by my father. And he told me that my older brother who was serving in the US Army, he was 19 years old, had tragically died. So my whole world just tumbling down. So fast forward a few years, I, I never dealt with the grief and pain that you really need to deal with when you go through such a tragic event. And I ended up abusing drugs. And so I got clean. I haven't touched drugs in over 30 years, but for the past 30 years, every single day of my life, it's always about trying to get back to a place of peace and happiness. So that is what I talk about in my book. It's a self-improvement book. It is a mini memoir, and it's also a workbook. And everything that I talk about in there, I live and do this every single day and have for the past 30 years. And I just felt like I wanted to get that message out to people because we live in such crazy times. Mm -hmm. Um, And I actually finished this book in January of 2020 before the pandemic. And I actually wrote in August of 2019, I said, we're at a crossroads in humanity and we have to change because the the way we're headed, um, it's just, you know, as a humanity, as a, you know, on a human level, we are doomed if we don't start to change and learn how to just love ourselves so that we can love everyone else. So that's, that's my story in a nutshell. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a fantastic story. You know, sorry to hear about your, your loss, but it sounds like your brother's spirit has been living within you. And it sounds like it's somewhat of a, a driving force for some of what you're doing. So, you know, that's, that's amazing. And yeah. so you, so you basically had a, had somewhat of an epiphany in 20, probably 2018, right? Because usually when you write a book, it takes a little while to kind of get everything together and, you know, get it to that point where you can actually put it out there. So you had an epiphany. What was it that triggered you to write the book? Great question, Dr. G. So actually I started writing the book in 2014 when I was, I never went to college right out of high school because I was a figure skater whole nother story. Okay. And, and um, I just, I was taking a business class and we had to create a company. And because I had been coaching for so many years, I came up with this business plan and started writing. I started writing the book and it was really putting course content together at the time. That was what was going through in my mind. And I put it aside. Life got really busy. I'm a single mother remarried, but from a financial perspective, I'm a single mother. Sure. And once my husband and I drove my son to college in August of 2019, it was like all of a sudden I just started working on the book every chance I had and was able to finish it um, in January of 2020. Spent another couple of months, you know, refining it and whatnot, sent it to my publisher. But, But that was really the epiphany 
when I was writing this in 2014 was, you know, we've got to change. Because even back then I knew, I mean, I was just so disgusted with humanity and how people are just so mean to one another. Mm -hmm. And especially now with the internet, it's even worse, you know? And um, so it just, I just reached a point, you know, where I just had to finish it. I, I'm one of these people that I finish what I start. And so since I had started it, I, I had to come back to it. And, and I didn't have all that my son being here, you know, you know, when you have kids, they kind of take up a lot of space in your head. And uh, so, yeah, that was that was the real turning point for me was that, you know, I knew that I had to get this this book finished. Fantastic. Not as great. And then did you so when you you wrote it, it sounds like you wrote it more as a um, catharsis, right? Like a tool for that. Um, did you anticipate that it was going to be something that would be in everybody's bookshelf or would be in everybody's backpack as they're headed out I mean did you anticipate something like that or were you just doing it for your own purposes and then it just so happened that it became successful so it's a little bit of both I mean obviously anytime somebody writes a book you want it to be a success mm -hmm. but yes I did write this with the idea of it's a workbook and open it up at any time. And whatever you're seeing, you need to see at that particular moment, right? Um, you know, it, it's it's listed in an order that makes sense for me. However, people can just pick it up at any time, open it up. And wherever you open it up, that's exactly what you're meant to see at that moment. Now, I only had three chapters about my personal story. Okay. And I realized that, to really be authentic with who I am that I had to write about my drug abuse because I didn't have that in there in the beginning. And it started bothering me. And that was really cathartic for me because I was addicted to cocaine. And there were times when I would wake up or let me back up. I'd be trying to go to sleep at 5 a.m. My heart beat racing and I didn't want you know, I would like ask for forgiveness of my sins because I didn't want to live any longer. I never attempted suicide, but I didn't want to live. And I would just hope that I would have an overdose. And then I would wake up in the morning with a sense of disappointment. So that was really hard for me to put out there. And it was very therapeutic for me to write that out because I, I, I may have been still holding on to some shame, right? Around that, because nobody wants Absolutely. to admit that you were at such a low place in your life. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I, I included it. I felt like, you know, this is who I am. It's part of my journey. It's part of it's it's part of who I am today, because if I hadn't gone through that, who knows where I would be. Right. So it it's it was an important part of my story that I needed to share. So so I included it and, and it was hard. It was scary. Yeah. You know, when you're just pe peeling off everything and saying, here I am. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the ultimate fear facing. You know, because we talk about fear on the show uh, pretty much a lot. <laughs> and so, you know, that right there, because, I mean, you tend to want to put forward your best image, your best self, and then to reveal to the world that, you know, you have chinks in your armor, that you actually, you know, you have a, a huge dent in your armor that you had to repair is, is huge. And so, you know, it is, it's amazing that you were able to face this fear on such a grand scale because most people have a hard time even revealing that kind of thing to their therapist, much less. So the fact that you were able to be in such a place where you're able to face that fear in a way that is going to actually benefit other people is amazing, right? Because there's somebody else out there who is going to read your book who's going to be in a similar situation and is going to see that as their ticket out of that situation. And it's going to make a huge impact that way. So yes, it's going to help people to understand how to be happy, but it's also going to help people who may be at the nadir of their life to realize that this is not the end, that there is only one way to go. And that is up. And so, yeah. you know, thank you for sharing your story because that's huge. Well, and I think it's, it's good that you had that gnawing feeling 
to share it because that is probably what is going to make the book, as you say, more authentic, right? More authentically you. Thank you. Thank you. And I received, I received what you said. Thank you very much. Um, the, the bottom line is, is we're all trying to hide behind something, but we're, we're all, we all, we're human and we all have parts of us that we may not like and that, but, but we have to come to the point where you just embrace those parts because the only way to truly find peace and happiness and joy in your life is to accept who you are, warts and all. Right? That's right. And, and get back to that self love. Because I didn't like myself for a very, very long time. I didn't like myself at all. I didn't. Um, and and there's still, you know, I'm, I'm, I always say I'm human. There's there's still times today when I realize, oh my gosh, you know, like, how can I have these thoughts? And it's like, stop it. Don't beat yourself up. Right. We don't want to beat ourselves up. You just want to acknowledge the feeling. It's real. We're supposed to have these feelings, but then, you know, give yourself a big hug and be gentle with yourself and, and, and allow yourself to go through those emotions so that you can be free to, to set it free. Right. Right. Not as good. And then, so you mentioned before that you are a coach. Is there a particular, um, subset of individuals that you focus on or that you, help in particular? Like who do you coach? So it's really anyone who is looking to take their life to the next level. Because when you go through all of the steps that I recommend you go through every day for 30 days, you create lasting change in your life. And when you create lasting change, you are able to manifest anything you want. So I coach them, you know, not only on, you know, figuring out what are your limiting beliefs, What is it that is, um, how are you self-sabotaging yourself? You know, Mm -hmm. are you making up Mm -hmm. stories? Are you, you know, being critical of yourself? Are you comparing yourself to others? There's a whole list of all of the reasons that people can, and the ways that people can make themselves unhappy. So we have to uncover those first and Mm -hmm. then go through all the rest. But, but I take with my program, I take it to a whole nother level because they are able to then really figure out what is it that you're passionate about? What do you want in your life? What do you, you know, and and you have to love yourself first before you can get to a point where you can actually create the life of your dreams. So it's really any, Anybody, I don't, I'm not, I don't specialize, you know, cause there's a lot of coaches out there, which, which is great because there's so many subset specialties with coaches and it's phenomenal. And I, I meet so many coaches every single day. Cause I'm in a lot of different groups, you know, on Facebook and everything. Yeah. And there's really a coach for everything. Yes. Um, are. For me, I'm a happiness coach. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Because it's, it's always good to kind of define that because I know like, when I'm looking for a coach, I get coaches for specific things. Like if I want to be a better speaker, I get a speaking coach. If you know what I mean? Like yep. I like to get my coaches that are going to basically get me to that next level in whatever it is that I'm doing. So it's always good to kind of uh, express that because people are listening to the show, you know, and they're looking for a coach. I want them to know that if they're looking for a happiness coach, that they're yeah. going to call you. Right. So, That's so thank right. you for sharing yeah. that. Perfect. Of course. Perfect. Yeah. And then, so, so if they were looking to, to get with you, how would they do so? Can you share so my your website, contact. Yeah. Yeah. My website is Sandy Scarlata.com. You can, sh- can you shoot- spell that out? That's because people are, may not be, you know, able to see the show notes. Of course, it's Sandy, S-A-N-D-E-E, and Scarlata is spelled S is in Sam, G is in George, A-R-L-A-T-A dot com. And my email is my first name, Sandy, with two E's, at sandyscarlata.com. And I offer free consultations, uh, so I can send a calendar link, they can schedule a free consult and see if it even makes sense. No, that's it's got to work. Great. It's got to work both ways. <laughs> no, so it's like, it's like any relationship, right? I mean, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's funny because when I tell people, you know, that I'm looking for a coach or I'm doing getting a coach or something, they're like, oh, you're dating again, huh? I'm like, yeah, I'm dating again. <laughs> 
<laughs> because you really want to find the person that's going to help you the most. And the person that's going to help you the most really? is the person that you connect the best with. So no, it's, I think that's, that's fan. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And that's great. You're dating again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. Hey, it's Dr. G and I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. I'm so honored to have you here with me. Did you know that I can help you to get your own podcast started? With my podcasting launch course for professionals, I walk you through everything you need to know about starting a podcast. I'm with you every step of the way from sign up to launching your show with five episodes ready to go. There's a done for you version that's also available. If you would just rather just do recordings and leave the behind the scenes work up to us, then that one is definitely for you. But either way, we've got your back here at Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Oh, if you already have a show and you need production services, we have monthly plans available for you. So check out the links in the episode show notes for more information. Let's get back to the show. Um, yeah, cool. And so tell, tell us, so you mentioned, you kind we kind of heard how you faced fear in a big way with revealing in the book, what tr the troubles that you have had in your life. Is there anything else that you can think of that was a huge fear facing event? So, you know, you start a business, you, oh, you know what, let's backtrack. We want to hear about the figure skating story. Okay. Because you can't okay. just like say, oh, I was in figure skating. I didn't go to college because <laughs> I'm figure skating. And then just keep rolling and expect Sorry. that you're not going to talk about that. <laughs> so you have to talk about figure okay. skating. Yeah. So my three brothers played ice hockey and my father coached it, you know, just the, the community leagues or whatever. And when I was five, six years old, I wanted to play ice hockey. Well, this was in the 1970s. And women did not play ice hockey back then. So they put me into figure skating lessons. I loved it. Um, I was, I was a good figure skater. However, back then you had to do figure eights, you know, there's the, and I was a little attention deficit. So to put a kid and make them go around in circles for an hour was not going to happen for me. <laughs> so I never really had a chance to make it back then. So I never competed out of my region. And um, my senior year of high school, I never, ever even considered college because I just wanted to be in the ice skates. I wanted to be, you know, in the chorus line and, and just that's all I ever wanted. So I auditioned and I made it. And two weeks after I graduated from high school, I get a letter from the ice skates, you know, in the mail, <laughs> this is way before computers saying, congratulations, you know, now you're on a waiting list. So I'm a little tall for skaters. I, I was five, seven. I'm now about five, six, you know, we shrink as we age. So it kind of made sense because it was a really small show at that time. So they probably only needed a couple of people at my height. So I thought, well, wow, maybe I should go to college. I did one semester at a fashion institute, did not have a good experience, came back home, started working full time and would, and would just attend a class here or there. So in the, what was it, 1993, they opened up an ice rink in my backyard, basically. And I was one of the first coaches on staff. And I just figured I was going to teach group lessons and teach my love to little boys and girls. So I was teaching a lesson one day and there was this, this young boy who was in rental skates and he was doing an axle. So anybody that knows about skating, you always, when you watch it, they always talk about axles or now they're doing triple axles. And I, I pulled him aside and I was like, you're on rental skates. How did you learn to do that? He goes, oh, I taught myself. And I was like, we need to talk. So long, long story short, again, he, I gave him a pair of my old skates. I painted them black and those were his first pair of skates. So we convinced his mom to let him start taking private lessons. He ended up, I ended up taking him to U.S. Nationals in an international figure skating competition. I watched him get his first gold medal in an international um, competition. We had to bring on another coach, another female she wanted nothing to do with me. She was Romanian and they're really hard to work with. 
<laughs> needless to say, you know, especially, you know, in any type of sport like that, it's very cutthroat. It's very cutthroat. Okay. Okay. So I talked to his mom and I said, you know what, I think I'm going to step down because he was going to be going to college anyway. So that's when I kind of took my turn and just started stepping away from the sport. Um, it was a little too toxic for me okay. and it was just not a healthy environment. Um, because of the, just the, uh, you know, and yeah. people are constantly trying to steal your students and like, I don't need this in my life. You know, I had, a, I had other things I could do. Um, and I had actually started an IT recruiting company. And so I stepped away from skating. My student ended up being when he was in college, he ended up being an alternate for the Olympics in pair skating. So nice. we still keep in touch and I love him dearly. And, you know, I was like his mom before my son was born. And yeah, so it, it's a great story. It, it, it checked off a box for me, you know? Wow. See, I'm so glad you shared that. Because yeah. that is such an incredible story. I mean, Thank you. just think about the impact of that. Like you yeah. just happened to like, oh, I'm just going to go down here and see what's going on. And then you end up impacting this young man's life tremendously because, I mean, he yeah. he probably would have been still teaching himself. You know what I mean? Like, because, <laughs> I mean, there's a certain level that you can get to with self-instruction but you get to a such a much higher level when someone is actually targeting your yeah. blind spots and helping you through that. Right. So, you know, you helped him to get to that next level, which is amazing. And I'm yeah, sure and that he, he, he appreciates that. Oh yeah, for sure. And we actually had coffee. It was on mother's day. It's probably been 10 years now. It feels like it was yesterday. So I don't remember right. what year it was. Right, yeah. And he just, <laughs> he's like, he goes, I had to sit and tell you that, you were just one of the most important people in my life. And I've always known that I had to keep in touch with you because you just changed my life in so many ways, because as a skating coach or any type of coach, you impact them on so many levels. You're not just teaching them skills. You're teaching them life lessons. And you're, Absolutely. you know, because you're, you, I spent so much time with him. We traveled all over the place together. And, and a lot of times his, his mom couldn't be there. So I was really responsible for him. And I heard that nowadays they've changed the rules in coaching and, that's not allowed. Like a parent has to be there. Um, but back then it was, it was okay. Um, so yeah, so it was okay. great. No, yeah. that's fantastic. Awesome. And so, oh, and then you, you happen to like gloss over something else. You mentioned that you started an <laughs> IT business. I did. Um, my brother is a recruiter and he got me into recruiting and convinced me to start a company. And okay. when you coach skating full time, many times I would work from six in the morning till 10 o'clock. And then I wouldn't have to be back until two or three o'clock in the afternoon. So I was bored stiff I see. and I didn't have any children. And so he goes, Oh, you have time. So I started an IT recruiting company and I could still coach skating here and there, but I ended up taking it to seven figures in less than 18 months. And it was awesome. great because the economy was really good. Yeah. And then March of 2001 in the DC oh, okay. metro area where I okay. live, the whole dot com okay. industry went. Boop. So I held on to the company till January of 2003. And my son was then two and a half years old. I closed up shop because, you know, we put so much money into it just to try to keep the doors open. I was just one of thousands of casualties of companies that went out of business. And um, my, since my son was so young, I decided just to stay home. Okay. And then I started working on my life coaching cert certification and started teaching workshops, live workshops. Uh, my biggest one was close to 500 people. Wow. <laughs> That's so small know, potatoes. Right. It was really funny. It's like, oh, I, <laughs> I didn't even, I was just doing it. I didn't know what I was doing. I just, I just, I have this confidence, like nobody's business. So I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that. And, um, I was teaching the law of attraction and I didn't even know there was such a thing. I had no clue. It just made sense to me. And then a few years later, the secret came out and I'm like, what's this? What's the yeah. law of attraction? And I started looking yeah. up and I'm like, well, I've been talking about this for five years now or however long it had been. Um, so that was really fun. Yeah. And now like, coaching is so much different because, because of COVID and everything, everything's online. So it's, it's been yeah. a, it's been a big transition for me to do everything um, by video, but mm -hmm. you know, the more practice you get, the easier it gets. So 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's um it's definitely it's definitely very different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like before everything went down last year, I mean outside of, you know, the emergency department which is my uh vocation, I guess. Uh there's uh I am a very entrepreneurial person and so I, you know, do public speaking and all this other stuff. So, you know, we were doing all these you know, speaking engagements and they were live. And then all of a sudden we couldn't do those anymore. So it was like a huge transition to the virtual platform because it's just very different. You know, I'm used to, you know, I'm on the stage and I'm getting down into the audience and I'm interacting with everybody. It is not the same when you're on a Zoom because you can't really Mm -hmm. have that same kind of connection with people. And you also don't really have like you're not able to like see their facial expressions really. And, you know, like reach out and touch them, you know, and, and particularly now, cause nobody wants to be touched now, like for well, sure. And you, so you can't make eye contact. You can't make like, exactly. I'm trying to make eye contact with you and I can't. Right. right exactly. <laughs> you know, and I'm trying to, and, and, and you find yourself trying to look into the camera or you find yourself trying to right, yeah. look at the person's face on the screen, but it's not the same. Right. No. And so it's a huge, huge adaptation that has had, has had to happen. And um, so I totally understand. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I can imagine exactly. like with the coaching clients and with, um, you know, even if you're doing any, I don't know if you do group coaching, but like if you're doing group coaching, mm-hmm. I'm sure that is challenging as well because yeah. uh, of yeah. the same, the same reasons. Right. Well, there's a lot to manage, you know, because you're letting people in the room, you're looking to see what people are saying in the chat and, you know, it's just a little bit to manage, but it's all yes, good. Indeed. indeed. But you know, we are adaptable, right? So Absolutely. That is, that's what makes us resilient human beings. Absolutely. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, no, this is great. And so, you know, you have shared some incredible stories and have been an inspiration to many who are listening. I am absolutely positively sure because you shared that you have experienced a common human emotion, which is pain. You experienced that. And that, that led you to a situation where you might've not made the best choices, but then it led you to a place where you had an epiphany and you were able to take that test in life and turn it into a testimony and manifested that in a place where you can impact many, which is by writing and you're continuing to impact people's lives by coaching. So, you know, it, thank you so much for sharing that story. And I saw over the course of your sharing, how you faced fear on every front. You faced fear as you walked up those stairs, remaining stairs of the hundred, as your dad told you that news, you faced fear when you made the decision to pursue figure skating. You faced fear when you made the decision to take on a student and teach someone and then teach the next one and then have a coaching practice. You faced fear when you jumped into the IT and business industry. You (laughs) faced fear when everything was crumbling, but you figured out a way to make things float until 2013. You faced fear when you decided to include your true story in your book that was going to go out into the world. So you faced fear, my lady, a number of times. (laughs) And done so very brilliantly. So, you know, I thank, thank you for you. that because that thank is you. that is something that really, you know, impacts a lot of people. And somebody is listening that some part of your story is going to be resonating with them and they're going to reach out to you as a consequence. So that is that is my hope. That is my hope, right? So, <laughs> you know, you. share again how people can get in contact with you. So just to make sure. Yeah, so my website is www.sandyscarlotta.com. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Coach Sandy Scarlotta. Perfect. And you can instant message me there. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we are at that point of the show where we do our tradition. Are you ready, Sandy? I am ready. Okay, awesome. So this is a fill in the blank. The first one is, if I am fearless, I will. If I am fearless, I will climb mountains. 
<laughs> awesome. 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 So sore. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's great. And the next one is to me, fearless freedom means. Oh, that's a great question. To me, fearless freedom means facing your fears. And by doing so, you will set yourself free to achieve anything it, that you have in your wildest dreams. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And then last but not least, my battle cry is. My battle cry is. My battle cry is. I would, yeah, my battle cry is forgive for peace. Okay. Okay. That, yes, that's, that's been a- my battle cry for years. Forgive for peace. Because without forgiveness, we can't have peace in our heart. That is so true. <laughs> so true. And that <laughs> one is a tough one, right? Because I mean, I'm sure there are people that might have wronged you or things that might have happened that it's very difficult to do that. <laughs> but, you have but no idea. Right. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. That is uh, that for sure will give you peace. No, that's great. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and spending with us here at the Fearless Thank Freedom you. Tribe. You know, we appreciate you. We appreciate what you're doing. And um, definitely, I know that you will continue to face fear boldly and make more incredible things happen here and now, right? And well absolutely. Into the so, so thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. J. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Again, I'm Dr. G. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when the next episode is going to be. And also, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.